Next, we can choose to allow dual trim only if both items are selected. Let me show you what dual trim is. Let's turn on trim content behind media items when editing and turn off our crossfading. Let's put these two items next to each other. And if we zoom in, that's a dual trim right there. This is one sided trim over here. This is the other side over here. And when they're touching like this, that's dual trim. That's going to trim both sides at the same time. Making the left side smaller and the right side bigger, or vice versa. That's dual trim. Notice it's happening with only one side selected or with no side selected. But with this chosen, it's only going to allow it if both items are selected. So right now, there's no dual trim. I could trim this side or this side, but I can't do them together unless I select them both right here, and then I could do it. If one side is not selected, I can't do it, or neither. But by default, this is turned off, so dual trim will work no matter what. The next option allows crossfades to stay together during fade edits when trim content behind media item is enabled. By default, this is off. So if this is turned on and auto crossfades is turned off, let's make a crossfade first. By default, if I grab up here, it separates that fade. Both fades are not together. You have this side and this side. But if you don't want that, you want it to stay together? Choose this option right here. Cross fades stay together. And now with this turned off, they're still going to stay together if I grab this. But without it turned on, they're separate. This side or this side. And this is off by default. So make sure you turn it on if you want this. Although the other option is to turn auto crossfade back on and it does the same thing. But if you prefer to leave it off, you can just choose this option instead. But it's off by default. Next, we have automatically delete empty tracks created by dragging items below the last track and back. This is on by default. By default, if you grab an item and bring it down underneath the other tracks, it creates a new track. And of course, you could drop it and it keeps that track. Make another one, the same thing. But by default, if you pull it down and then pull it back, it deletes it, which is good if you're making a mistake, if you didn't really mean to. You wanted to say grab it and bring it over here, and you accidentally went down. You can go back up as long as you don't let go of the mouse and it doesn't make that track. To make that new track, no matter what, we could turn this off. And now we could bring this down, it makes a new track, bring it back up, and it's still there. I guess it's a pretty good way of making new tracks. You just grab it and create some new tracks that way. But the default is to automatically delete them if we don't need them. So pulling this down and then back up automatically removes it by default. The next option is dragging the source start offset of the active take adjust the offset for all takes. By default, this is off. So now you have four takes. We can choose them like this. But there's an option using a modifier to change the start time of each one or the source start time. On the Mac, it's Option. On the PC, it's Alt. We hold it down and move it. It changes the start time of this item. Let's turn off looping. And now we can shift the timing of the start of it, like this. 
but notice it only changes one take at a time. So you can do each take separately, which is really good for comping vocals. And one line happens to be out of sync or out of time, we can fix it without it affecting the other takes. Just shift them around until they sound right. But if you want to shift them all together, choose this option right here. Dragging the source start changes it for all takes. So now, do the same thing. All the takes move together, which makes more sense if it's not one take that's out of time, but all of them. But by default, this is turned off. And now finally, if no items are selected, some split, trim, and delete actions affect all items at the edit cursor. This is on by default, and let me show you what it does. If we want to split one of these items, we can just choose it, hit S, and it splits it. But if we don't choose any item and just put the play cursor or edit cursor right here, it's going to do the same thing across all the tracks, which makes it very convenient for editing all the tracks at once. Just click right here to move the edit cursor, hit S, and we can split it across all the tracks in the project. But sometimes you don't want that. So we can turn that behavior off right here. And now if we do it and hit split, nothing happens. But by default, when nothing is selected, they're all going to split. So that's pretty much it. That's the editing behavior preferences in Reaper. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.